Hello everyone, and please subscribe to the I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Sorry, I apologize. It took me some time to fix the audio. Uh, today our topic is actually very important. And as you see, uh, we are going to talk about uh, Blackstone. You know, I'm working in uh, my coming book. Uh, actually, I'm working in more than one book. And, uh, you know, sometimes I save, uh, let us say, some important information for, uh, let us say, the coming uh, study, the coming book, the coming information. Uh, we share many of them uh, online. Online is just to explain and uh, to make the education easier and uh, uh, easier to deliver to everybody in the world. However, always books is the way, best way, to, you know, to, to learn. And uh, still, I, like the old traditional way is the best way to learn. That's what I believe. Now, for short, the world today is changing, but I think books at the end of the day is the best. And uh, it doesn't matter what uh, technology brings to us. Uh, reading a book is something uh, we enjoy, especially if the book is teaching us something new. Uh, today, our topic is not something new we spoke about before. But there is a lot of new information I will share with you this time, which actually I was preparing it to be in my book, not to share online. But then I said to myself, I mean, it doesn't matter really. Uh, if I say it now or later, uh, you know, when you do and you search and you study very well, and you are a person who try, uh, you know, to connect the dots together. A TV screen is nothing but uh, dots. And uh, when you receive an image uh, through satellite or through antenna or a digital cable, in fact, you are not receiving any image, you are receiving dots. And those dots go through a processor and the processor uh, translate those dots into an image which we can see and we enjoy. Uh, history is the same. History is the same and the problem is that uh, most of us do not know how history is so much connected to each other we think that the uh, history of uh, egypt is d different from the history of greece and the history of greece is different from the history uh, of uh, the babylon or uh, you know the persia when all of them those are connected and they are as nations uh, they mixed very much, not only in war, uh, but by uh, marriage or even rape or slavery uh, or taken over on war. So there's a lot of mix and through that mix, a lot of ideas and belief they go through. And today we are going to show you something very important. I'm sure you never heard this before. and No one before me spoke about it. The black stone, which the Muslims always speak about. If you ask any Muslim, he will say to you, black stone is a black stone. It's a stone. But the fact is, the black stone never was a stone. Even though they call it a stone. If you zoom in the image, which I'm showing you now on the screen, and I will zoom for you. Give me a minute. You will notice that this is not a stone. You know, the, the name is very deceiving. The name is extremely deceiving. Black stone. First of all, it's not even black. Secondly, it's not a stone. It is small, tiny, little rocks inserted in the brown expensive wax always when you read the, the Muslim books like Al-Bukhari or Sahih Muslim we read the sentence it says Al-Hajar Al-Aswad which means literally black stone. And you know, one of my 
like uh, young, this is like two centuries ago, uh, I used to think that the black stone is a stone. The whole thing is a stone. I never saw it from short distance. I never get close to it to see. But you know, when technology came and we have computer, we have internet, and then we were able to, to see really how the stone looked like. It turned to be that there's no black stone. It's only little tiny stones inside the wax. And if you go right now and search for black stone Kaaba maintenance, you will see that the Muslims almost every week, they have to add more wax to the stone because when people touch it, the wax will start demolishing and those stones, little rocks, they can be stolen. They can be taken because they are very easy. This is why they have always guard and people watching to see if anyone trying to, you know, to unblock one of those stones and steal it. So they are small, tiny stones. Then why they call it the black stone? If you see with me in the, in the screen, uh, you might notice that this uh, uh, introduction mentions something about the Greek or the Greek, Greek uh, mythology. What the Greek mythology have to do with this? It doesn't make sense. I mean, those are Muslims. Those are Greek. There is a huge difference between them. Um, uh, that all doesn't make sense. But if you study the Greek mythology, you will find that there is a lot of similarity between the black stone of the Kaaba and the stone which one of the gods of the Greek, very famous god, horrible god, the first god ever who ate his babies. This god, supposedly in the mythology, he learned that his kids will replace him. His kids, they are going to take over him. They are going to get rid of him. His name is Coronus. Coronus, he have a goddess who is his uh, companion, or you can call it wife or girlfriend. When he learned that his babies are going to take over his kingdom and they will revolute, uh, make a, like a revolution against him, he decided to eat them. So he started eating his kids one by one. After he ate almost all of them, there was only one left. His girlfriend, or let's say his wife, his women, a goddess woman, her name is Rehya. She did fool the god and she gave him a stone and she wrapped it inside, uh, you know, like a fabric. So the God, he swallowed a stone as he did to all his children. And this is the last one. Thinking that this is the sun. But you do not know that she replaced the sun with a rock. And then the sun grew and he became powerful God. And then the story, the mythology, continue about how he took over and he broke justice against the father who ate his children. But in the story, this mythology, that this God, when he learned 
about what happened. Uh, based on the version of the story you read, but all of them they agree that he spit. He spit the babies, but they are now stones. And those stones are seven stones. They are the seven babies. If we go to the Kaaba stone and we count how many there are, they glue them together to make them look like a stone or one stone, but in fact they are not. You will find that there is seven, even though there is some like they are, they glued together like, like you know, if you remember the story of Al Qurmuti, who he took uh, uh, the black stone supposedly, and he used it as a stone for Pupu for almost 21 years. He destroyed the Kaaba. He proved to Muslims that Islam is false by saying, challenging Allah. There's a chapter in the Quran, it's called the chapter of the elephant, speaking about the Christian army coming to destroy the Kaaba, and then Allah He sent His birds who they throw rocks at the army and at the elephant army, that's why it's called the elephant. Which is very funny to bring an elephant or one elephant uh, to the land of Mecca because an elephant cannot survive, not even half day walking in the desert. A desert has zero water. But if you count the stones, you will find that there are seven stones. Each one of them resemble the babies of the God who swallow his babies. If you, uh, if you ask yourself, or let us say, uh, if you try to find uh, an answer about anything, with these days we have the internet, it can help you a lot really. I mean, it can, it can, it can save you from having a huge library in all days, in order to uh, have a few uh, books, we, we have to be rich, literally, you know. You have to be really rich. Every book costs you a lot of money, a lot of money. Uh, these days, the, in the internet, there is endless number of books. Like, people before us didn't have such a, uh, such a let us say, uh, a luxury, where you can find a book in two seconds. If you go and search about the God, this God, Coronos, who his girlfriend secretly gave birth to Zeus in Crete, and you know, and she warped, uh, and she gave, uh, she handed Conos the stone warp in fabric, cloth, and he swallowed it. He thought he is getting rid of it. But then, when you check the numbers, who the God ate and then he spit. But that is not the only issue. You will find that the stone which is given by the goddess, the Greek believe, it fell down on the center of the earth. Where? On the center of the earth. This stone became a location of a temple. Huge, massive one. And this is stone where the God is spit is the markland for the whole earth. Remember what happened. And this is why it fell in the center of the earth. Now, if we go and ask Muslims, where is the black stone located? What do you believe? You will see every single Muslim will say to you that he believes that the black stone is in the center of the earth. You will find tons of videos. This is a proof 
that the Kaaba is the center of the earth. Remember, the Kaaba itself is built in the location of the black stone, which Allah He sent down from heaven, which was white, like milk. And then the sin made it black. The Greek goddess who committed a great, like a great sin by eating his babies, who perform unjust, he swallow a white stone. He spit white stone. But the stone which he spit, it is where the Greek used to go and uh, pray and worship. And this is where it says that this is stone by time became the center of sin forgiven to remember or remembrance of what happened and the unjust happened by such a God. The Muslims adopt exactly the same idea. Mecca is the center of the earth. It doesn't matter how much you try, Muslims, they insist that it is the center of the earth. And they use something called the golden ratio. But in two seconds, you can debunk them and you will see that this is something very stupid. Because using the golden, the golden ratio, the same one, can prove any city to be a center of the earth. Simply, either you believe that the earth is flat and that will make it a center and it have to be a circle, you know, flat circle, not a globe. And then that can make it maybe the center. But the center of an earth which is not a flat, it is simply a fabrication. You will see the Muslims in their TVs. They have tons of videos. And they bring this guy supposedly, he is a scientist, Egyptian scientist. If you watch this video actually, you will see that he claimed that, uh, I don't know if this is the whole video, I think this is a short video of it, short version of it. He claimed that when the American, they went to the space, to the moon, they found a ray coming from the uh, Kaaba, going all the way, they don't know where, but going all the way to the sky. And this ray supposedly is connected to the house of Allah in the seventh heaven. And then those Americans, they published this news in the internet for 17 or 18 days, as the guy he said, but at that time there was no internet. Proving that the whole story is just a fiction, stupidity, but the Muslims believe anything, as you see. Going back to our topic, the black stone obviously have a connection with the Greek mythology. In the same time, it doesn't mean that it does not have its own touches, which mean other religions is mixed with it. We have tons of Muslim books. Say clearly that the black stone was white, and then the blood of women, which is from their menstruation, made it black. And that blood is a blood of sin. Why? Because those women supposedly they are unable to have babies. So what they do, the man he go and the woman goes and they go and they go around the Kaaba totally naked. Uh, if you remember, we showed you before, we showed you before, uh, many reference about people going around the Kaaba totally naked. Totally. They are wearing nothing. All what you see in YouTube is nothing but laughable and really stupid. And if somebody shares the truth, usually nobody even watches video. You have to be a professional liar in order uh, you know, to make people listen to you. Saying the truth is not a good business. 
nobody will care for what you say. The Arab who used to go around the Kaaba totally naked, and who shape the Kaaba simply, or they shape the black stone in the shape of a vagina. You know, nobody asks himself why the Kaaba is in the shape, or the black stone is made in the shape of a vagina. What was the reason why it's shaped this way? And if there's no stones, why they make it a stone? When it is, in fact, it's not even a stone. There are little tiny rocks. Who is the one? Sorry about that. Who is the one who made this stone like this? Who is the one who designed this stone like this? Who is the one who put this frame? And why this frame look like that? Studying more history, you will see that this stone simply always presented sexuality. From the mythology of the Greek, the god have sex with the goddess female. The god, he feared that his children, who they are gods, they will take over him. The god ate the babies, the god he sent the stone, the god the stone arrived to a human being, so he can remember, and he put it in the center of the earth, so a human being, they remember that God of just is always there. And even if the bigger God, he is not just, there is someone, truly God, godly person is going to make justice happen. Muhammad, he adopts tons of his stories about this black stone. The black stone is going to witness for you in the day of judgment, Muhammad said. The Greek believe that the stone witness for the crimes of the bad God, which simply, simply in this case is like Satan. By touching the black stone, your sin is forgiven. It's erased. Muhammad, he made tons of claims. All of them present nothing but paganism, and none of them make any sense. I will show you some of them. But we go before we go there, we will show you how this is connected to the Greek mythology again. The house of Zeus. is the first house which is marked by the stone of gods the house of Allah is the first house which marked by the stone of Allah if we go in the Quran we will find this And you will find something very strange. Chapter 3, verse number 96, it doesn't say even the word Mecca. It says the word Bakka. What is it, Bakka or Mecca? The first house established for the people was that at Bakka, a place which is holy. I will not be surprised if we do a little search and find that there is something connected to something else. If you remember before, I showed you a temple in Yemen is called the Temple of al Makkah. Now we have Mecca, we have Bakka. What is that? I mean, it's Mecca, it is Bakka, it is. Well, it's, it's kind of confusing. You will notice that the Muslim he says to us that Allah He sent the Quran in seven letters. 
seven letters. What seven letters mean? Doesn't make sense. They say to you in seven dialect, seven Arabic dialect. In fact, none of them, those are Arabic dialect. Arabic is a collection of foreign language like Aramaic, Ethiopian, uh, Hebrew, uh, uh, you know, like all kinds of uh, uh, Coptic, you name it. Persian, like as an example, uh, Stabrak. Stabrak is a Persian word. Allah, he promised the Muslims a fabric which is silk, and he called it a Stabrak. It's like saying Gucci at our time now. Like something very famous known, it is a fabric made in Persia, which is very stupid to say because if Allah he wrote the Quran before the time of a human being is created, then he is using something even made by the non Muslims, the enemy of Islam. That is even more stupid. And what he would do, he will import this fabric to heaven. But focusing our topic here, that you will see that the Quran saying, or Muhammad saying, Ibn Mas'ud is one of who, the one who wrote Quran. He has his own Quran. And this Quran, by the way, does not have the chapter of Al-Fatiha. The whole chapter does not exist. The Quran was sent in seven moons. So what does that mean? I mean, is it worth it? The whole Mecca is a small, tiny village. It's not even a city. Like maybe now you see a city. This is because Las Vegas grew and became a big business. Before Islam, there's many Kaaba. Every tribe, they have their own Kaaba. And the more important the tribe is, the more people come to that Kaaba uh, uh, to worship. So Kaaba was a very normal thing. All Arab practice it. But now we have seven Quran, and we have the Quran saying the word Bakka, and saying the word Mecca. So is Mecca the same as Mecca? We will assume for now that it is the same. Following the trace of what Muhammad said that Allah sent the Quran in seven dialect. But here you notice something very stupid and very funny. Because if Allah sent the Quran in seven dialect, then the word Mecca would not be located in the same Quran where the word Mecca is located because the Muslim will say to you well Mecca it was one of the dialect which the Arab they use so sometime the letter B become M the letter Ka became Qa as like the, the one in Yemen but if this is the scenario then it should not be in the same Quran so obviously the one who collected the Quran, he makes it up, you know, this is a verse should not be in this one, it should be in different Quran. But we are lucky to have them both, because this is the most popular Quran and we can use, the, use it to prove our point. So now we have Bakka and we have Makkah. The chapter of Al-Fatih, uh, verse number 24 as you see, and the other chapter here, uh, Chapter 3, verse number 96. If we go and do a little search, we will find that the word or the temple for the moon god is the temple of Al Makkah. Now remember, we just mentioned that Mecca can be Makkah, for it is different dialect, as simple as that. Uh, for a long time, they thought that this is the temple of the sun god. But finally, after they were able to read the what's so-called uh, inscribed on the walls they were able to come to the conclusion that they were wrong and al maqa was the moon god temple 
I saw uh, somebody send me a video of uh, two Christians without saying their names and a lady she was talking about uh, uh, the black stone and the Kaaba and Allah and uh, they said that uh, the black sorry the Kaaba or Allah is not the moon God and uh, the lady she was quoting somebody book and she said this is his position today as if we care about his position we have facts we have facts you will see here al maqqa al al uh, you know like uh, in arabic we use al uh, to give definition like you say in english uh, the the like the house the tree the car so it's like to give definition so like something is specific not any house not any tree not any person so uh, the teacher so we're not talking about about a teacher we are talking about a specific teacher however i told you before that l as a word is coming from the aramaic language originally and it is a word mean god the Sabian they consider the temple of Al Makkah is one of their temple. The same as they consider the Pharaoh was one of their holy men. This is why the Sabian they curse the Jews and they call the God of the Jews Adonai, the devil. As an example in their books, uh, the Sabian. They say that Adonai, the devil, he commanded the Jews to do circumcision for themselves. You will find that Muhammad adopted the same thing. In the same time, there's a contradiction. If you go in the, in the Quran, or if you ask any Muslim, before we go to the Quran, if you ask any Muslim why it is forbidden for you to have a tattoo, uh, why it's forbidden for you to have a fake hair, especially for the women, men they can't do it, uh, why it's forbidden to take hair from your face. He will say to you because you are you know, changing the way Allah created you. The way Allah created you. And you will see that this is how Muhammad he adopted what the Sabian they taught and they believe that a person should not change the way he looked like. If God created you in such a way, then you don't change. But then Muhammad, when he met with the Jews, he accepted, or let us say, he promoted the circumcision. Which is totally against what Muhammad himself teach. If I cannot take hair from my body, and the excuse is, by doing that, uh, you are, you know, challenging God. I mean, you are, uh, uh, you are changing your look, and you are not allowed to do so. Who allowed you to do so? You know, who, 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 uh, who is the one who gave you permission to do that? You will see Muhammad claiming. That the one who commanded or let us say he promised to change the look of a human being which means he will make a human being change his look me myself by the way i have no problem with such a thing i mean like those who are satanic people who uh, put uh, rings everywhere etc they have mental illness i don't want to blame satan for it but the quran literally blames satan for it in chapter 4 uh, verse uh, uh, 119 it says according to Muslims if you read it by the way if you read the verse you will, you, you, 
right away you will come to a conclusion that this is Allah is talking because nowhere here it says that this is Satan talking this is how stupid the Quran but I will go with the Muslims they say the, the Muslims they say this is Shaitan speaking Satan so Satan said I will lead them astray and fill them with the furnace and I will command them to cut off the cattle ears and I will command them to alter, to change uh, the God of creation. So in one hand, Muhammad, he adopted the circumcision, but in the other hand, he adopted the Sabian, who they believe that al Makkah temple belonged to them, that the change in the creation of God look is satanic. Muslim cannot even explain to us why even they do circumcision. What they have to do with it. And how the Quran says you cannot change the creation of God. And then you go and change the creation of God. If God created you with this piece in your private part, then why you want to take it off? So either this verse is a fabrication or this verse is what Muhammad really said but that will make a contradiction with the rest of the Quran and the Muhammadan speaking about uh, changing the look if a woman she take hair I'm, I'm not going out to the topic by the way because the title is about the black stone right already we cover some of that but we will go back there so uh, the temple of Al-Makkah and the story of Muhammad they are very much connected Muhammad he learned a lot from those Sabian in fact in the hadith Arab called Muhammad Sabian the Sabi the Muslim they will say to you oh no, no. they call it Sabi because uh, the one who leave his religion they call him Sabi but Sabi is the name of religion. What Sabi? Sabaa. He became a Sabian. So there is a story of a woman. She saw a bunch of Muslim men looking for water, and they asked her where to find water. And the woman she said, oh, "Okay, I can tell you. Who are you?" They said, "We are the one. Uh, we are coming with the Prophet." He said, is that the one who is called Sabi? They said, yes. And I will show you the reference. Here in front of us, which is very authentic hadith, you will see that the one who changed the creation of God is cursed. You remove hair, a woman removing hair from her face is cursed, is going to go to hell. So which one really is more horrible? removing hair from your hair if you are a female or cutting a piece of meat literally in your penis or circumcision for women because Muslim now they do circumcision for, for women and they claim that this is what happened from the time of Muhammad so in one hand we cannot change the way Allah made us but at the same time Muhammad he told them to color their hair red because they want to be redhead and he forbid them from coloring their hair black because he hate the color black. They want to be blonde. This is why, if you don't notice, uh, if you notice with me, uh, uh, you will find some Muslims they look really funny with their beard and their hair. Uh, you know the the issue is when I try to to go in a topic, a lot of information come in the way. And you will find yourself instead of making a video of one hour, uh, you end or maybe 40 minutes, you end with maybe you making a book. Uh, this is a Muslim coloring his beard with red color, literally red. Not this is not a blonde, literally fire color. And actually, it looked really ugly. It looked satanic. 
So it is in the Quran that shaitan will make them change the way Allah made them look like. Yet the Muhammadan, they want to be blonde. Not blonde, they want a fiery red head. And this is how Muhammad used to do his beard. This is not only Muslim today. This is how the Muslims copying what Muhammad did. And you tell me how much good looking that is. For me, I find it look like Satan. Look funny and look stupid. And why in the world anyone want to do that to himself? What that would do exactly? It doesn't make sense. So this is a stupid religion. is a collection of other religions. He took some from the Sabi and he took some, some from the Jews and he took some from the Greek and their stones. We mentioned to you that the black stone, uh, according to Muhammad, sent down from heaven, right? Let me show you something. About the black stone. While the Greek they believe that the black or the stone, sorry, was a spit from the mouth of God, and the Muslim believe uh, that the black stone sent down by Allah, they don't tell us it's sent from where, they say it was in heaven. But they don't say if Allah had to use his hand or he spit it. However, you will find something very important. Uh, and I'm going to share this link with you. And the one who really care to learn is the one who say reference. This is a book, very important book for Muslim Sunni. The website, this is a Shia website, but we don't care the Shia website or Sunni. This is a book, and the book is a Sunni book. A Seer al volume number one, page number two, five, six. I highlighted for you a sentence in green in the search. Let me be sure that you guys can see it clear. It says that the black stone was shiny with light. And the light of it used to go all the way to the doors and the gates of the, the area which the Kaaba is located. It was, it become black because the period blood of women touched it during the era of ignorance. Some they say that become a black because Adam used to cry and he dropped he drop his tears on it and his sin. They say that some they say that the sin of the children of Adam made it black. And some they say the reason for it is so so black because of a fire in the time of Horaish. Secondly, in the time of Abdullah ibn Zubair. This is history where the Kaaba being burned and destroyed. And this is proving that the Muslims lie when they say the Kaaba is the house of God protected by God. And the story of the elephant is a fabrication. And then they continue saying, 
Allah he took the stone when the earth was flooded in the time of Noah. And he was in a tent. As it mentioned in the story of Ibrahim, peace be upon him, when he said to Ishmael, to Ishmael the Muslims, they have their own stories, by the way. So don't, uh, you might hear this story for the first time, but this is what, this is not what Abraham, he said. This is the Muslim Ibrahim. So Ibrahim, he said, let me, let me use Google Translation right away so you guys can read instead of putting Arabic for you on the screen, which make no sense for you. Use Google. Why the translation is not working? Uh -huh. Not able to do click and make translation. I don't know why. Save as BTF. Hmm. I'm not sure why I'm not able to do so. Ah, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, because this is not Google browser. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay, it's my fault. Let us open it in Google browser. And... I will highlight it again. <laughs> and now we are going to use Google Translation. Give me a second. Too many browsers are open. All right, let us use this. All right, so now we are going to make it go uh, 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 English. Here we go. It should be working. Yeah. Come on, don't give me a hard time. All right, now we are fine. This is the reference. I will shorten the link and give it to you. Biography of Aleppo al Halabi, very number one, page number 256. Very important reference. The black stone was with you know, have a spark of light or have light coming from it, reaching all the way to the end of the doors of the cell, like the area which is forbidden. And, uh, and the black stone. Here the, here the translation is not coming uh, really too much good. Be, it become a black when the menstruation touch it in the pre-Islamic time. Now this is for us is very important. Why? Because that will prove to us, prove to you what Christian Prince he claimed. That a black stone is used as a stone of fertility. Remember that the Greek God he ate his children. The Greek God, what he did, he ate his children. He ate his babies, literally. When he ate his babies, is to destroy the fertility. Is to get rid of it. In other way, is to destroy any uh, children who can be. Uh, it's like. It's like a penalty. He's angry. God is angry. God is angry. So this God who destroyed the fertility, he is not going to allow you to have a baby if he is angry from you. So what people used to do, they go and they, the women and men, they used to go around the Kaaba to train naked. And we showed you before reference, if you remember. If we go here, let us show you the reference. Uh, 
as you see this is Sahih Muslim this is very authentic the Arab before Muhammad and in the time of Muhammad not after in the time of Muhammad which means almost Muhammad he spent all his life and the Arab and he never opened his mouth against it you will not find one story one hadith one one verse in the Quran saying anything about people going naked around the cup so what they do when they go naked why they are going naked what is the reason it says here that narrated that the circumambulate around the house, which is the Kaaba, in the state of nudity. What is exactly the practice was there to the point they are nude. And then in other stages of the practice, they put some clothing. They're not even, they are not even allowed to bring their own clothing. They have to rent, or let us say it's a business, you know, the one who take care of the Kaaba. They rent them clothing, which is the same as the Muslim today they use. But why they were going around the Kaaba naked? The God is angry. This God is not allowing those Arab to have babies. He eat their babies. He swallow them in their womb. So by going to the Kaaba, as we showed you from the Islamic reference, not from my own, it says that the blood of the menstruation made the black stone black now if you ask yourself how a woman she have menstruation can cause a stone to turn to be black what is the connection the only way for it to happen is to believe or to say that it touch it in fact i can show you other references says the blood of menstruation touch it so what the what the Arab used to do why, why they are going naked women who they cannot have babies and their men they go totally naked around the car when they arrive to the black stone which have stones spit from the sky those stones come from the mouth of God and those stones present fertility of the Greek God. Then, by touching those stones, you are touching God. For those stones is coming from God, and this God, He might forgive you. So you might be able to have babies again. Going back to the reference here, you will see the first thing you will notice how the story is messed up. Tons of reference, none of them. I mean, here it says demonstration, and then they continue saying, and it's mentioned that it was black because Adam wiped away his tears on it. Which one? And then it's mentioned, it's mentioned, state, that the sin of the sons of Adam make it black. And mentioned that because of the fire, when they burn the Kaaba, the enemy of Allah, Allah could not protect his Kaaba, the fire made the stones black. Once in the time of Quraysh and once in the time of Abu, uh, Abdullah ibn Zubayr. And it's mentioned that the stone was raised from the earth from this, uh, to the sky, from the earth again, when the whole earth is covered by, uh, by the flood of Noah. And it's mentioned, it's mentioned, it's mentioned, it's mentioned, it's mentioned. I mean, tons of mentioned. And this is what Islam is based on, legions. 
Muhammad is saying something. But you will notice here, it says, when the flood of Noah came, Allah, he put or he delivered a stone to a mount, a close mount in, in Mecca. It's called Aba Qubais. Not far from the Kaaba. So Allah he stored that stone there. If you will notice here, it says, uh, in the in the reference in front of us, I don't know if you can see it in English. Uh, Abraham he told his son. Oh my son, get me a stone so I can put it here. Ishmael, he told him I'm lazy and stupid or tired. I'm very tired. Okay. So he went looking for a stone. But then Jibreel, he brought him a stone from India. The translation here is not coming correct. From India. And this is the stone which Adam, he came out with it from paradise. Are we done? No. And it was said that Jibreel placed it and Abraham built on it. And Ishmael came with the stone from the valley. I mean, do you see how many stories on one page about the black stone? And this is a very serious book. This is how authentic Islam is. They don't they have no idea what they are talking about. It's a collection of fictions and stories. We are not even reading the beginning of the page. And if I can continue reading, you will see how stupid, how dummy, how confusing. Like after reading all this page, did we even learn where the black stone is coming from and what is the black stone? It been said, it been said, it been said, it been said. And each story is different from the other story. But we have something very important here where it says demonstration. And you will notice this is came in the beginning. As the first option. Who won the reference? Let me shorten the link. All right, let me know if it works. Uh, let me know, please, if the link is working. If not, I need to make a new link. working all right so very very important and you know we can find we can get i can get you tons and tons and tons of reference about the same thing but repeating reference doesn't make any difference we we prove it that's it so the arab go nude around the kaaba and then there is more stories about how men they used to go the hajj never was called hajj it used to be called al-haq 
What al hack mean? Scrabbing. Hack, not hajj. Hack is the women touching her private part on the black stone. And the black stone, obviously, it was not like this. There's a hadith. Let me see if I can find it. Where it says that Ibn Abbas, he used to prostrate and pray on it. So it wasn't really in that position we see right now in the Kaaba. Here we see the story, Muhammad saying that the black stone was white like milk and the sin of mankind made the black. But you ask yourself, is that can be true? Sin making a stone black? And does that mean that a person he become black because he did a sin? Yes, Islam teach that. You are white, or you are a good person, according to Muhammad, and you are black because you are a bad person, according to the faith in Muhammad. That's why the Quran says, The day that Allah will make faces black or white, those who they are Muslims will be white, and those non Muslims will be black. So here, you will see how Muhammad he practiced the black stone ritual. Uh, this one is not about the black stone. This is a hadith about the last thing Muhammad did. Actually, I find this hadith, by the way, like it came in my way. Now. I find it very funny. The last thing Jesus, he said in the cross, forgive them, Father, they do not know what they are doing. The last thing Muhammad he did, he asked his wife Aisha to give him a dish so he can piss in it, and he died. All right, but anyway, this is not our topic. Here we have Omar al Khattab saying that I know that you are used as a stone, and there is no benefit from you, neither harm. But just because Muhammad kissed you, I will kiss you. But here you notice that Omar is not convinced with anything he had to do with the black stone. But Muhammad, he said clearly that the black stone is the right hand of Allah. The black stone erase your sin. The black stone is going to witness for you in the day of judgment. The black stone, the black stone, the black stone. So here Omar, because nobody dared to question Omar, and nobody dared to say Omar is exposing Muhammad. Nobody. In fact, I believe strongly that Omar, he used to ride Muhammad like a donkey. When the Hadith says, That Muhammad he taught them that touching the black stone and the Yemeni corner, and that will take us to the Yemeni corner in Yemen, that is the temple of Al Makkah. If you touch them both, it erases your sin totally. All sin are gone. Let us see the hadith. Here we go. And this is authentic hadith. O oh, Abu Abdul Rahman, why do I only see you touching these two corners? He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, is touching them a race sin. And I believe Muhammad clearly, he made that in order to avoid releasing a slave. The Arab before Islam, they used to do something the same as the Greek people. If God is angry from you, you release one of your slaves. And you know that this is slavery is not, you know, should not do that. So what do you do? You free a slave. Muhammad, he is a slave businessman. He owned many slaves and he enslaved people. So if anybody free the slaves, that is not a good business. So he told them, you do not need to free a slave. Touching the stones, the black stone, which is not a stone, many stones, any little tiny rocks, 
and the Yemeni corner and going around it, it, it erase your sin. It is the same as freeing a slave. So nobody now will free. Which one is, is easier? To go? The purpose is to, to forgive your sin. The purpose of a freeing a slave is to forgive your sin. This is what the Arab used to do before Islam. So now Muhammad told them, don't, don't do that. Cross the black stone and the Yemeni corner, which they, the, the, the corner which have stones from the temple of Al-Maqqa, and your sin will be forgiven. The black stone is the right hand of Allah. Let us find the hadith. Now for sure the Muslims, as they wish, when they wish, they deny, they accept whatever they like. Things which was granted to be authentic for centuries. Today, they will say to you, it's not authentic. Uh, let us see. I'm just trying to find. an official website. All right. I will give you the page. Number six. Al Hajr al Aswad, Yamin Allah fil Ard. Faman istalamahu aw safahahu, fa kaanna ma safah Allah taala wa qabla yaminahu. What does that mean? The black stone is the right hand of Allah. Whoever touch it or hand it as if he did shake hands of Allah and he kissed his hand. Let us use Google Translation. The black stone is the right hand of Allah on earth to so whoever touch it or shake hands with it as if he shake the hand of Allah and he kiss the hand of Allah translation is not coming really accurate uh, but you know this is what we have by using Google translation as you see let me shorten this link for you too so you can save it in case you are interested. If I want to do a full study about the black stone, I guess I will be done by next week. Because there's a lot, a lot of things, crazy stuff about this black stone. But we are just trying to share with you what is the most important for you to, uh, to be able to recognize what this religion is about. How false it is and how truthful it is. And you can be the judge if you are a Muslim or whatever your religion. You'll be the judge of what makes sense to you 
and what it does not really make any sense. Uh, let me send you the link. Give me a second. Another hadith, the black stone is going to have eyes in the day of judgment. It's going to have mouth. And I guess this one we can find it. Uh, in the English website, let us see. And here you will notice that Muhammad is going farther in his paganism, and suddenly the black stone become a very important figure in what the Muslim they claim it is monotheism. Remember, the Muslim they keep bragging about the monotheist prophet, but yet the black stone forgives sin. The black stone is the right hand of Allah. The black stone is going to witness for you in the day of judgment. The black stone is going to have eyes and tongue and is going to speak against you or for you, as you see. And those are authentic hadith. If you are watching this video later in different channel, always you can freeze the video and you know you will see the, the name of the book. You will see the reference and you can search it in Google. So here it says, the Messenger of Allah will rise on the day of resurrection with two eyes by which is sees and a tongue that is speak with is defying to whoever touch in truth. Even that we can find it connected to different mythology. But that will take us really to, I mean, we will not finish. Always you will find stupidity is coming from somewhere. Actually, I saw a Jewish guy. He is so silly and so stupid claiming that the black stone the Muslim they have is the same as the little box the Jews they put in the top of their head. But this is absolutely dummy false. It's not true. Because first of all, the Jews don't have a black stone. Secondly, that box is not a stone. It's a piece of leather. And it was taken from the Bible. But the Jews, as usual, they take it literally in the wrong way. Uh, you know, I saw a lot of dummy people in the world. And I could not believe how some Jewish, they claim that the black stone is the same as what the Jews put in their head. I want to make a comment about what the Jews do having this box in their head. First of all, nowhere in the Bible says to them such a thing. This is very silly and very stupid. And you look, you look like a fool. All what the Bible says, that the phrases which God gave to you, you put it between your two eyes. It doesn't say put a box. This is not about putting something literally. The box is called the Tiflin. I have nothing to do with what God he command. You shall bend them as a sign upon your head. And they shall be for a reminder between your eyes. This is metaphorically. God don't care if you carry a box on the top of your head. Or not. They took it. And they decided to make it. And as you see, this is not even. This is have nothing to do with a stone. And there is no stone involved. But you know, some... some uh, uh, some like a uh, uh, Toiva singer is an idiot, you know, he lie and he make things up. So it's a piece of leather, and inside it there is a scri like a, a script, quote uh, 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 in Deuteronomy uh, uh, verse, 
about what 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 God he said and uh, like uh, quoting like uh, they are quoting from there the action which mean you bend it literally you put it as sign in your head and then they take from uh, 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 the the Bible that okay your God is one or Israel your God is one but this is have nothing to do with the black stone second num number two the Jews they should not have done such a thing that is really a silly understanding of the Bible uh, it doesn't look good it doesn't look right and it doesn't look smart like imagine you are not really a believer in God unless you have such a box in the top of your head. And God will not listen to you unless you put the verse literally on your head between your eyes. And look, just to show you, even they don't do what even, uh, uh, you know, they, they, I mean, when, when the verse says, let me, let me open the verse, hold on, give me a second. Even though this will change our topic for a second, but no problem. And you shall bend them for a sign upon your head, and they shall be a commandment between your eyes. Okay. Let us go and see how they are even putting it and where they put it. Do you put it between your eyes? No, they don't. So obviously, this has nothing to do with what they do. When they put it, they put it in the top of their head, not between their eyes. Imagine you put this box between your eyes. Just try it. So why you don't? If you are following literally, then follow literally. It cannot be in the top of your head. In the same time, it's between your eyes. It cannot, because simply your eyes is not in the top of your head. But anyway, human being, you know, maybe one day a rabbi he told them this is what it meant, yeah, and we follow, and everybody do it. But nobody want to use his brain. Because even this is against what the verse is saying. Uh, so when somebody says this is a black stone, this is funny because there's no stones there. This is a piece of leather and there's a, a, a scripture from the Bible inside it. And have nothing to do with any of your stone Muslims. So don't even try to go there. And if you bring me an idiot, he's saying it is because he's a donkey. We laugh at him. Uh, I'm not going to continue talking about this topic. Uh, I think we cover a very good portion of it because if I continue, the reference is endless and we will not finish. But anyone remember what is the name of the God we, we spoke of? What is the name of the Greek God? Who remember? I'm just trying to find if your uh, uh, memory is, uh, you know. Anyone remember? We, we spoke about who? Who is that Greek god who he, he ate his uh, kids? I want to see if you guys are taking reference or Koronos, or exactly. So the, the wife, she hide one of the babies, that baby, he, instead of she gave him a stone, she rubbed it with the clothing, he swallowed a rock, and then he spit the rock, he spit it, he spit the seven rocks, which is the babies. So when he spit, he spit rocks, and this is what the Muslim believe, that the rocks are coming from the sky, who they are a mentor. They have different weight and they are exist all over around the world, not only in Arabia, not only in Russia, not only in Greece, it's all over. We have mentors every second coming from the from the sky. How do you do with God sending rocks? So the story is there. You can go check it out. 
you can read it and I would like to see some of you adding some smart comments maybe there's something I did not mention maybe something I should mention uh, and maybe you don't agree especially if you are a Muslim but you will notice how too much similarity between the story in the Quran and the story in the Hadith and the story of the Greek very much similarity about the babies and the menstruation of the blood of the women and going naked around the Kaaba. You know, it take me all my life studying and reading. And I did not learn what I learned by reading a newspaper. And I'm sure many of you, anyone heard this one before, what I just said? I'm sure not, because nobody spoke about it before me. I'm sure I can guarantee you that nobody spoke about what I just said today before me, about the Greek God and his wife or his girlfriend and his babies and the connection to the Black Stone. When you study, when you spend long, long time, and you start reading stories of mythologies, and then if you are a person who really trying to find like uh, like you, you don't just read and put it in the shelf and your but your brain is functioning your brain is trying to connect the dots together you will find a lot of similarity between here and there and you when when i saw in the story that they believe that this is the center of the earth this is exactly what the muslim believe it is the center of the earth The black stone where the Kaaba built is the center of the earth. The stone which the god of the, the, the Greek at that time, Coronas, he throw or he spit out, it's the center of the earth. You will find that things is, 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 is coming together and give us a different and more clear image. The fertility and touching the vagina and then the man coming and putting his penis inside the black stone. So the vagina and the penis, which is supposed to be is going to go through it and they have sex around the Kaaba. They are going to have fertility because now the God who ate babies is not eating babies no more. If you remember, I find it always astonishing how stories they come together when shaitan he ate or let us say he killed the babies in the womb anyone remember the reference when adam and eve they had sex and now they should have babies. Uh, each time Eve, she will deliver a child, or she deliver a child, he die. Some story says he die in the womb, even before birth. Satan come to him, or to, sorry, to Eve, and he told her, if you don't want me to destroy your seed, call him, call the babies, any babies you have, the slave of Al-Harith. Eve, she come to her husband and she told him, well, this is what Shaitan told me. If I call him Abdul Harith, the slave of Shaitan, Harith is one of the names of Satan. Our sons will live. 
So Satan is swallowing the baby of Eve. But if you obey Satan, Satan will not swallow your baby. In fact, he will not even touch your belly. Let me show you some reference. And here you will see that all Islamic Muhammadan stories is nothing but fictions and stupidity. Nothing but fictions and stupidity. Nothing, nothing there. Let me find you some trustworthy reference. Let us see this one. Uh, okay, well, we, this website is good. This is the, the book of at -Tabari. Let me give you the link. Uh, this link do not need to be shortened. And you can use Google Translation in your site. You will find tons of stories here. Shaitan scaring Eve, saying to her, I will make him have horn. I will kill him. I will open your belly. I will, I will, I will, you know. And Eve, she went to her husband and she told him, well, the, the baby is dying because Shaitan doing this, but he told me if I call him the, the slave of Shaitan, he will live. So Adam agreed. After many times, Eve insisting. The story is so silly, so stupid. And you have to be a certified idiot to believe in it. But this is what they believe in. But remember, this is the religion of monotheism. And now Adam and Eve, in heaven, they are attacked by shaitan, and shaitan forcing their babies to die. And now Shaitan is saying to them, listen, if you want the baby to live, you better do this. To do what? Well, if you don't do it, I will make your son look like, an, like a donkey. I will make him have an ear of an elephant, uh, uh, of, a, of a camel. I will make, so, so if she said, oh, okay, no, well, he is going to kill our baby. And he is, he is. the baby died. Each time she gave birth to a baby, the baby died. Let us use Google Translation so you can see with me that this is what it says. And this is why we believe Islam is nothing but a pagan collection of stories of stupidity. And to believe in it, you have to be an idiot. Sorry. I mean, this is how it is. You better open the page in your site. Open it with Google Translation, and you can use your own language, by the way, because you know each one of us is coming from different country, uh, and you have your own language. But here, you know, you might uh, like be confused. Abdul Harith, Abid mean uh, a black slave. Al-Harith is the name of Shaitan. This is one of the name of Satan. So Shaitan, he told her, if you call him this way, uh, Abdul Harith, Abdul, he will live. And uh, the story here, like there's many versions of this story. Uh, Ibn Abbas said, Ibn Abbas said, okay. So uh, uh, he keep co causing the babies to, to die. And he told her, you know, he scared the hell of her. 
if you don't do this if you don't do that even i will look him like an animal make him born like an animal i will install for him ears tail etc and then she you know adam and eve they agree uh, to do as shaitan required but all of us we knew that this will be very weird because uh, the stupid quran to speak about two sons of adam And none of them, his name is Abdul Harith. Based on this story, which is coming from Muhammad supposedly, every son of an Adam, he is the slave of Shaitan. His name is Abdul Harith. If you go to the stupid Quran, look how many stories in the same page. I mean, it's endless. All of this is about Satan and Eve and uh, Abdul Harith. If you go to the stupid Quran, you will find this, the yellow page of Muhammad. This is why nobody can take Muhammad and his books or the Muslims generally seriously. It's just a stupid religion. Yet they claim that they have authentic source. They say to you, even we recorded how the Prophet do poo, poo But even that was written 200 to 300 years after Muhammad did. Do you have a camera at that time? You know, how someone al Bukhari, he can write about Muhammad, he never saw Muhammad. How we can trace what Muhammad did generation after generation after generation, and people they never met Muhammad. And how we can be sure that they are not lying? They will say to you, it said from this, from this, but they can lie. The one in front of you says, I heard this from that, and he heard it from that. I can say now I heard a story from Peter. Who told you? Who told? Uh, okay, well, who heard Peter? I say uh, Paul. Who heard Paul? I can I can give a list a name. But what you can do with religion? Their best man is Muhammad. Here you will notice a story in the Quran. Chapter five verse number 27 it's about the two sons of adam here it doesn't mention today to you uh, uh the names it, it says the two sons of adam but muhammad uh you know he mentioned the names but as we see in this story here they are abdul harith imagine all your names all your sons you call them with one name abdul all of it in order to uh, uh, to live and this is why you see until now the Muslims they give their uh, their children's a name of a beast like uh, you will see a Muslim to call himself uh, his parents call him tiger or lion or Osama Osama is a lion uh, the reason for that because Legion says there's something called a tabia. A tabia is sent by shaitan. Shaitan will kill your babies. But if you give your son a name of a of a of a of a meat animal eater, like a beast, like a wolf, so you will see a Muslim. His name is Dib, which means wolf. Fat, king fat, fat, uh, the leopard. Nimr, tiger. All those names are given for a reason. Because this religion is full of superstitions and legions and fabrication. I hope we were able today to cover something good for you. And we learn something good and new and feel free to save your reference and if you are good in writing articles or even making videos that will be a blessing and always try uh, not to be selfish and share with people you know the same we share with you what we learned uh, share with people what you learn that way you will become a blessing for the community for your family for your friends same time people they appreciate you 
uh, knowledge is a treasure ignorant is dead a human being die because of what because of ignorance even about health if we know what is the medicine to stop any disease we will not get sick if we know how to fight cancer we will not die if we know if we know if we know that doing this will be a big mistake we will not do it if you know that if you marry this woman or marry that man your life will be miserable we don't do it so what is the problem for a human being is ignorance and if you want to believe in religion doesn't matter which, which one you better study carefully what you are believing in otherwise you are a monkey you are just a person who saw a banana and you know your saliva is dripping even it looked like a banana but it's not a banana you don't even check it you don't even touch it yet so we have to study we have to be careful and the more we study the more we know the more we are strong and for us as a Christians even you as a Christian you should not believe in Christianity blindly even though the Lord he says bless the one who believe and did not see but he's not talking about a person did not see with me did not uh, search study look for truth someone did not see me and someone he believed by knowing not just by seeing because seeing can be deceiving you might meet a person look so good look respected look uh, professional uh, somebody even dressed like a monk you see him like he have a long beard he's a he have a gray beard like man respect this old man and he is a monk he's a man of god but he might be a pervert like muhammad so we believe in god and the good of god and what jesus did after we check it out even though we did not see it because we have millions of reasons to believe in it even though we were not witnessing at the time of Jesus. Until now, there is miracles happening in his name. And actually, one of the best miracles, Christians, they, uh, they witness that when the enemy of Christ, they fed the Christians to the beast, Christianity flourish. It's not what the Christians carry guns and kill. It's not what the Christians have uh, the army of America or the army of Russia. It's when the Christians are really Christians. So our strength is by following the teaching of Christ. Even when the wolf, he has teeth and he kill Christians. Still, the wolf are not going to take over, and the sheep, they are the most beloved. And the wolf is the most condemned. And the wolf is a wolf. Even though he tried to come to you in the clothes of a sheep. Muhammad, in the beginning, he tried to come in the clothes of a sheep, but it did not take him long before he showed that he is the beast, he is the devil. So I say to you, as the Lord said, and this is the best to finish our podcast for today, from their fruits you shall know them. Not from their speeches. Muhammad, he gave tons of his speeches, most of them about stupidity. Black stone, forgive your sin. If you say the word, inshallah, your sin is forgiven. But at the same time, he speak too much about God, but he was a rapist. He broke every single commandment of the Ten Commandment given to Moses. He worshipped false God. He gave false prophecies. He lied. 
he killed, he raped, he stole, he did everything you can imagine. What is left about this man is good. Even when he went to his own son's house, he flirted with the wife and later he took her to his house. He flirted in their books. This is not in the book of the Jews, in the enemy of, the, of Muhammad or the enemy or the Hindus. Or the, this is in their books. He went to the house of his own son. He flirted with the wife when the husband is not there. A man of God do what man of God do. This is not a man of God. And when you say the Muslims, do you accept that? He says, I will be honored. I will be honored if the prophet, he want to sleep with my wife. This is what Satan does. They will be honored that Satan will sleep with their wives. You think he will say no? Are you no way? They will say to you, I will be honored. And I heard it thousands of times. Maybe next time we go live, he can call me. Right now, really, I don't want to. I don't want to take a phone calls. But, you know, we stay here for many hours taking calls, but not today. So I want to say, guys, thank you. And any Muslim would like to join us, you know, next time, we will be happy to have you with us. As you see, we're going in this time. You can find us always. Uh, yeah, next time, next time. We, you know, sometimes we stay here for hours saying who wanna call us. Suddenly, he, you know, this guy wanna call. Yeah. So I wanna say thank you, may the Lord bless you all. And don't kiss stones and don't worship stones. And God has nothing to do with the stones of Muhammad and Muhammad have nothing to do with God. A pervert, a pagan, a false prophecy, a privileged man cannot be from God. Always remember what the Lord he says. In order to be a master, you have to be a servant. Muhammad is a man of a privilege. Privilege about money, about sex, about the booty, about how many wives he have, about heaven. He have a privilege in everything. The whole religion of Islam is designed for the privilege of the devil Muhammad. You will notice that the Messiah, who we worship him as Lord. He was washing the feet of his disciple. And when the disciple says, Lord, what are you doing? He said, if you don't let me do it, you don't belong to me. I do not know you. That is our Lord. The Messiah, he never owned a slave. Muhammad is a slave owner. The Messiah, he never harmed a person. Muhammad, he killed, rape, cheat, lie. The Messiah, even in the Quran, Chapter 19, verse 19, is the Holy Son. Even in the stupid book of Muhammad, the Satan, the, the devil could not deny that Jesus is the Son of God when he said he is the Holy Son. If you remember when the Bible speak about the, 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 the evil spirit, they said to Jesus, what do you, why do you want to destroy us, Son of God? Why do you want to destroy us? The Messiah even don't want people to know at that moment that he is who he is. So he rebuked them. For he don't want them to know, to say, you're shouting, what do you want from us, O Son of God? Even Satan could not deny who is the Messiah. And the Bible says clearly, who is the Antichrist? Who is Antichrist? Is the one who denied the Son and the Father. And that is the devil Muhammad. So I will leave you with the peace of the Lord. And there's no peace for the wicked man, the Lord said. Thank you. God bless you. And see you soon again. This is your brother Christian Prince, who is serving you humbly for today. And I will see you soon again. God is good. Love you, Jesus. Take care.